Okay, good morning. Today is going to be just a little video on some tips on making uh, vegan cheese. And I know a lot of people are struggling uh, making this cheese or any type of vegan cheese. I know some of them don't want to eat the agar and some of them are not crazy about the uh, kappa carrageenan. And some are complaining about cheese not stretching the way animal product cheese stretches. Well, number one, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but... When you make a cheese with agar or with kappa, it's never going to stretch like a animal product cheese. So you have to learn to enjoy cheese the way we eat it now, which is uh, it's not going to be a super stretchy cheese. It might melt on you if you get the proportions right when you're mixing your cheeses and you have the right amount of fat and the right amount of um, agar or kappa it's all chemistry really and the uh, also the starches you know tapioca gives it more of a gooey compared to the uh, corn starch or potato starch you know that the uh, tapioca has more of a gooey texture so it's all chemistry really and when you start making cheeses if you're not getting those proportions right you might not get uh, the best stretch when you're uh, when you're melting these cheese uh, on pizza or whatever but I find instead of slicing your cheese if you grate it on top of your your pizza it's gonna melt nicely it won't be as stretchy as an animal product because the protein in animal products is different from the protein in plant-based uh, products so don't get discouraged uh, there's a plus in eating vegan cheese you don't get the cholesterol you don't get all those horrible things that you get when you eat animal products so there is a plus in eating plant-based cheese so don't get discouraged uh, practice makes perfect and all I can tell you is keep making it and keep enjoying it for instance I really don't care if the cheese doesn't stretch I'm okay with just having beautiful sliced cheese on whatever even if I'm making pizza I will cut a piece of this cheese and it will go on my pizza so that doesn't bother me if it didn't melt on top of the uh, on top of the uh, on top of the pizza I'm okay with just breaking pieces and just throwing it on top of the pizza enjoying it the way it is remember food is all about visual and uh, taste uh, it doesn't have to always have a stretch to it so someone posted yesterday someone said uh, said to me you know what uh, cheese is overrated it really is overrated because you can make a beautiful gourmet pizza without having all that melted cheese on top so uh, now back to cheeses this is not a stretchy cheese this is just a plain a raw nut cheese that I made and a lot of people tell me that their cheese is too liquidy after they put it through the blender the cheese was way too liquid for it to hold together because normally what I do is I get that right texture and I'm able to maneuver the cheese with my hands. With a little bit of starch, I'm able to form discs and then tie the paper around it. Okay, so if you're in a rush and somehow your cheese didn't quite make it firm enough for you to form them into discs, number one, they have to ferment. And as they ferment outside the, um, the refrigerator, at least a day, I would say, it might firm up on you. But if you manage to somehow mess it up and have your cheese way too liquid, there's still hope for that cheese. This is an example of a cheese that was way too liquid. Now, it looks like a regular cheese to you, right? A cheese that you would buy at any store. This is just an aged uh, nut cheese. This is just almond. There's no cashews in this at all. I did put cranberries in this one because it was over the holidays. I made some. Uh, but because I was so busy with the holidays, uh, when I threw my ingredients together, it was a little... Uh, it wasn't as firm the texture as I wanted it but that's okay too if you can not form it into a disc what you can do is use one of these guys right here and that's why you see all the markings on the cheese is because it went into this container now this is a cheese container you could probably pick one up on, uh, on Amazon but if you making cheese and you're in a pinch and you don't have one of these take a regular container like this either you could drill holes or you could poke holes but always poke from the inside out because you're going to have all these rough edges on this side you don't want the rough edges on the inside because then it's going to make it difficult for you to pull your cheese out but poke holes 
at the bottom, poke holes on the side, and use this instead of one of these if you don't have it. But what I did was, because I wasn't going to throw this batch, batch of cheese away, was I threw my cheese in this container. Now, if you really want it to be safe, you could put just a thin lining of um, safe. When I say safe is that if it gets caught between the ridges here, that it's easier for you to pull it out. But you could put just a little thin lining of um, either parchment only around the edge here, all around, so you can make like a little ring of parchment, nothing at the bottom because you want drainage, right? And if you, um, if you don't want to do it that way, you could put a very thin lining of um, cheesecloth. And then you put your mixture in there, and then what you do is you put paper. Notice this one you're stained, because this is the one I took off my cheese already. Um, you put paper at the bottom, and you put paper on top. And what you do is you leave it out for one day, let it ferment that way, and then what you could do is take this and put it in the fridge, right? Without any plastic bag, you might want to put a dish underneath, and you put it upside down, and you put this in the fridge, and you let it stay there for a couple of days. And you're going to see uh, your paper is going to get very, very wet because it's going to suck up all the moisture that's in the cheese. By day two or day three, okay, uh, check it. Actually, you should check it every day and change the paper if you can. But don't throw away the paper. Throw it in the sink. I always say buy good paper because if you throw it in the sink, you could always wash it and reuse it, either to wipe down counters or whatever. So it's not going to be a waste of paper. You don't want to waste anything. But in a day or two, check it, change paper, and check your cheese. If it's still way too soft when you touch it, all you have to do is change the paper and then upside down again into the fridge on a plate because you want to be able to pull this out without dropping anything. And you'll see your cheese will firm up. Now it's going to continue fermenting in the fridge and it's going to start drying up on you and that's what you want. When you're able to uh, pull it out, you simply uh, take your cheese and slowly massage the container and slide out your cheese. And once it comes out of this, okay, this goes in for wash, you're left with just the cheese. That's still going to be soft. It won't be super, super soft, but it still will be soft. So you're going to take this cheese and you're going to put paper underneath, paper on top, and you're going to get brown paper like this where you're going to wrap it. And I'll show you how I wrap mine because you want to wrap it good. So I save these papers. If I ever order anything from Amazon and they come with paper, trust me, I do not throw it away. I save it and I use it for cheeses. So now I've got my cheese and I've got my my tissue, not my tissue, my paper towels top and bottom. And I make sure I don't over squeeze it, but I wrap it and I wrap it that I get a nice bundle where it's nice and secure and it won't get squished and it goes very lightly like this. I'm not going to over tighten my package and it goes in the fridge for at least a week, two weeks, if not longer to, if not longer to age it. The only thing is that every couple of days you want to unwrap this cheese and you want to switch out the paper. Take the one that's wet, take it out and put new dry paper under and on top and that's how you're going to be able to keep it from not going funky on you because if you keep this wet paper on your cheese you will start getting mold now if you do happen to get a little bit of mold on your cheese you know that any aged cheese is going to get mold on it guaranteed guaranteed if you see there's a little bit of mold on your cheese i mean this one has not there's no mold on this one it's aging though. You see it's starting to make that hard brine. So that's a good thing. Inside, I'm going to show you what it looks like inside. There it is. There's my cranberry. It's nice and delicious on the inside. This could age even more. It'll only get firmer on the inside. How firm do you want it? It's really up to you. At this point, we're eating ours. I really don't care. It's delicious. You could hold it with your hands. It's not going to fall apart on you. But yes, you want to continue 
to check your cheese and to change paper if you have to. But like I said, if you come to the cheese because you maybe forgot it a week and you, you just forgot to check it and you come and you see a little bit of mold on your cheese here, all you have to do is take your knife and cut it off. Let me tell you something. When you buy those cheeses at the grocery store, before you see what you see, it was covered in mold. Dry it up. Mold on the outside, they clean it for you. They grate the mold off and then they give it a wax with some oil. And I'll show you, that's another way you could protect your cheese. Is you take a little bit of, I starch mine, so I'll be restarching this one. But if you want, you could take a little bit of paper towel and a little bit of oil. You could also make a mixture of vinegar and oil. And, and salt and then you just pass it over your cheese what it does is it gives it another layer of protection like I said mine has starch I'll probably restarch it again but that's another way you can um, kill off especially if it has a little bit of vinegar in your mixture kill off anything that might grow on the outside of your cheese so there you go making cheese is a dedication it's not as hard as people see it I've been getting messages my cheese is too soft I can't it won't hold together what am I gonna do remember guys this is a cheese basket they use this when they make cheese it goes right into this where all the water comes out of it now because ours is not an animal product ours is an, a nut mixture we have to find a way to get the water out and my best way of doing it is using paper I find that it's it's the easiest way to absorb all that extra water and all of a sudden you get a beautiful firm cheese that you can hold cut and if it doesn't melt who cares really let me tell you something I've bought the most amazing gourmet pizzas that doesn't have melted cheese on top it'll have just chunks of broken cheese on top because not hard cheeses melt, right? So this is what I'm telling you. Just because you have, um, just because your cheese doesn't melt, doesn't mean you can't make a beautiful gourmet pizza. Try making a nice pizza with some artichokes and maybe some slices of potatoes, and break up some of these hard cheeses and just crumble that on top. They'll get nice and toasty. They'll get a little saltier because uh, in the oven. It dehydrates them even a little more so you have a different texture going under your teeth. You can still eat delicious gourmet food, beautiful food that you'll blow your family away. And it doesn't have to have that melted cheese on top. I do have this thing that I make where I pour it on the pizza. Uh, it's like um, it's a, it's a melted cheese that's already melted basically. And I scoop it on the pizza and when you see that cheese it looks amazing on pizza because that's what people are used to seeing but it's not something that's a must remember uh, we've ordered pizza we've made pizza with no cheese whatsoever on top so pizza doesn't have to have cheese remember that yes if you like cheese you can put cheese on top but vegan cheese will never no matter where you buy it no matter which one you buy it will never melt the way an animal product cheese melts. So if you want a melted cheese on top that's vegan, I'll show you a recipe soon. And you're going to see you actually can make something that you pour on top of your, uh, your pizza and it looks just like the melted cheese. So remember, they're there to eat the finished product. And when the product is good, that's all that's important. So here's a few tips on how to make your cheese firm up. And like I said, if it's too liquidy, do not get scared. Get yourself one of these. And if you don't have time to get one of these because you're in the process of making cheese, get yourself a Tupperware. I'm sure you have one of these in your cupboard and poke holes on the outside. The more holes you have, the better it is because this way the water gets pushed out. Uh, drill holes if you have a little drill maybe and drill from the inside out. So any stubbies are on the outside and not on the inside. And then put your soft cheese in there and then paper and just let it age and firm up in a container and let me tell you something even though even if this doesn't have holes your cheese is going to firm up say you don't have time to drill holes what you do is put your mixture in here and then put paper towels at the bottom lots of it i would maybe double it 
put it on top of your cheese like this and keep it in the fridge you're gonna see every once in a while you're gonna remove the bottom because it's gonna get very wet and you're gonna put new paper on top throw this in the sink remember guys we're not gonna waste this put new paper back in the fridge again eventually it's gonna detach from this container because the cheese is gonna shrink as it loses its water and then you can simply slide out your cheese at this point you could put paper on top do not press it down because that cheese might still be soft just lay your paper on top do your paper on the outside and check it every and before you do anything else starch the outside your cheese is starched then wrap it in your paper and every couple of days go check your paper if you see that it's all wet you don't want to contaminate your cheese you're going to take this put it in the sink use it for washing put clean paper on top like i have already here this one that's at the bottom is dry here we go and here's my clean one on top because this cheese is still wet i mean it's going to get eaten before it completely dries because at this point we can eat it it's firm if you can hold your cheese up like this you know you're able to eat it if you have people over cut some of this cheese put it on a nice plate put some beautiful fruit around it and enjoy it put it on some crackers enjoy it i'm having mine on half a bagel this morning with some sprouts i'm gonna enjoy it so cheese making is not hard just don't expect miracles because we're eating nuts we're not eating animal secretion where it is a whole different type of beast it's a whole different type of cheese because of the proteins in the animal cheese it will melt more than any plant-based cheese but remember but remember uh, with animal cheese comes negative with plant-based cheese comes positive that means no high cholesterol this is really the way to go if you want to keep your body healthy you have to stop the animal products and start eating some plant-based food so there you go i know i dragged it on longer than it should i just wanted to give you guys a little tip i'm not going to promise you miracles but i'm going to promise you more videos and especially hints on how to keep your kitchen going your vegan kitchen going as clean and as um, frugal as possible you're going to be able to save some money you're going to be able to make some delicious food and not struggle as much so i'm going to say thank you guys thank you for the patience waiting for me but here you go so i'm going to say thank you and i'll see you in my next video guys for more videos like this make sure to subscribe to connie's rawsome kitchen give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends